Hello friends and fans of EVGA and today I'm going to be giving you a quick guide on how to overclock your graphics card using Precision X1. Uh, now I should say uh, this is not going to be an extreme overclocking guide. This is kind of to get yourself familiar uh, with some of the controls in Precision X1 so that if you want to get a little bit more performance out of your graphics card uh, I can help you do so. So let's get started here. We have our RTX 2080 Ti Kingpin installed in Jacob's streaming rig. I've taken over uh, his streaming set for this. Um, and this is the main page of Precision X1. Let's go ahead and close out a superposition here. Uh, what we have here is the memory clock, the GPU clock, the GPU voltage, the power target, and the temp target. Uh, now, when getting the maximum clocks out of your card, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna max out your power and your temp target. By default, those are chained together, so to speak. So uh, as you increase the power target, you're going to increase the temp target. Um, that's fine. On a card like this, uh, the Kingpin, which has a 240 millimeter rad, um, you're really never going to hit anywhere close to the 88 Celsius. So even if this was lower, it really wouldn't affect anything. The bigger thing is the 144% power target, which is 144% of the reference 250 watt TDP uh, for a 2080 Ti. So let's go ahead and apply that. Um, the other thing that I'm going to want to do here is I want to max out my fans. So if you're using an air-cooled card, you're just going to increase your fans to max speed. Um, it's also not a bad idea if it's inside of an enclosed case. Uh, take the side panel off so that you can get a lot of ambient airflow to your card. The reason for this is you want to try to factor temperature out of your overclock testing. Um, the point of doing overclock testing is to see what is the max stable frequency of your graphics card. And it doesn't really help if the card is throttling because of the temperatures caused by the cooler. Um, so you want it to be cooling the most that it possibly can. So a nice cool room, side panel off, fans at full speed. I'm just going to start with a voltage increase here and an offset of about 100 megahertz. So this means that uh, when your card reaches its maximum boost clock, this will put an additional 100 megahertz on top of that. Uh, in the case of this card, that's going to bring it into around 2100 megahertz, uh, somewhere like that. Very high frequency for a 2080 Ti, but being that this is a kingpin, it should be able to do it fairly well. And I had tested this previously, 100 megahertz offset should be okay for this card. Um, and we're going to go ahead and apply that, and then we're going to do one run through superposition. Um, I like superposition for a couple reasons. One, it's free. Uh, two, it seems to be a pretty good test of stability for just about every card that I've tested it with. And three, uh, it's kind of a stretch goal for this particular video. Um, I did use this in XOC on my 1080 Ti graphics card, and I believe the highest score I got was about 6300. I think it was 6288. Um, and my goal on here with this 2080 Ti Kingpin is see if I can break 10,000. Um, breaking 10,000 would uh, represent a 60% increase in score uh, over a 1080 Ti. So if you're somebody holding on to a 1080 Ti, you know, a really overclocked 2080 Ti could be as much as 60% faster in a benchmark like this. So I want to see if we can actually uh, reach that goal via overclocking. So I've got the 100 megahertz offset. We're going to go ahead and run the benchmark now. Uh, and see if we get a stable run. If you don't get a stable run, then the, um, the actual benchmark will exit out automatically. Uh, if it's really, really unstable, then you might actually get the entire system locking up, and that is possible when you're overclocking. Um, make sure that you don't have any programs open that you really need files saved on or anything. I'd recommend closing all programs except for Precision X1 and whatever benchmark you're running. So I'm gonna let this run, and we're gonna give it just a minute. Okay, so we got through our first run of superposition with the 100 megahertz offset um, and no other real changes other than power target and the um, fans set to maximum speed. Uh, and the result that we got was 9,383. Um, so we still got a ways to go to get to my 10,000 goal. Um, I believe though in my testing of superposition in the past that it is pretty bandwidth heavy. Um, so I think that doing some memory overclocking is gonna help us as well. Uh, memory overclocking is very similar to GPU overclocking, just that you can usually get away with a bigger offset uh, increase in clock uh, on memory than you can on GPU. Precision X1, if we want to increase the memory, I'm going to try going kind of far, maybe too much. I'm going to try to increase it all the way a thousand megahertz. And what that means is that it's going to show 8,000 megahertz here instead of 7,000. Um, 
the reason that it shows 8,000 megahertz instead of 16,000 megahertz, which is technically the effective bandwidth uh, of the memory chips on this graphics card is because it's like every RAM these days is DDR or double data rate. Um, so technically it's only running at half the speed that it advertises because double data rate is compared to uh, single data rate RAM from way back when. And that's just a convention in memory that's kind of stayed with us for years and years. Um, it's not even really accurate when referred to as double data rate because in a sense, this is double data rate memory that is also quad pumped double data rate memory. Uh, so the actual frequency that the chips are running at is 2000 megahertz. Uh, and then you multiply that times eight for the effective frequency of 16,000 megahertz on this particular graphics card. It's basically the same for any card that runs GDDR6, GDDR5X or GDDR5. Uh, that, that's all quad pumped uh, memory. Um, I believe all the way back to GDDR3 is when they started kind of quadrupling the data rate. So let's go ahead and try that again. We got a score of 9,652. That's not bad. That's definitely better than it was. Um, I believe the card is running on the normal BIOS. So one thing that I want to try doing is going to one of the overclocking BIOS. Uh, one question you may be having at this point is, is the card stable? Um, that's not really a question that either you and I can answer at this point, because quite frankly, um, just because the card can stably get through a run in superposition does not mean that there's long-term stability at these settings. Uh, to really determine that, you kind of need to play it in a bunch of games and kind of live with your card for a while um, and see if it'll play a bunch of different titles and benchmarks and there's no issues with stability. And if so, then yeah, you probably do have a perfectly stable overclock. Um, so I'm gonna switch those BIOS and I'm gonna get back to you and see if we can get an even higher score. 1100 on the clock and 110 on the core. Now 110 on the core may not actually be any more. Uh, the reason why is because the card will only go up in increments. I believe it's like 12 and a half megahertz uh, increments. Um, so 10 may not be enough to get it to that next step, depending on where 100 was. Okay, uh, so we did get through that run and it came out with a score of 9,803. Uh, now I'm getting nervous about actually hitting 10,000 because that doesn't, 200 more points, maybe. Let's start pushing into the, the I'm going to break something territory. Um, we'll put 1500 offset on the memory. I'm still pretty cautious about this course. I'm gonna try 115 uh, and let's see. And like I alluded to before, adding five more megahertz to the core offset didn't actually make any difference because it's still running exactly at 2145 megahertz. Um, it looks like this card goes in 15 megahertz steps. Um, so the next step up for this card would be 2160. Uh, so I would actually have to push the clock a little bit higher to have it run at 2160. Um, but in my testing of it in the past, I don't think this card can actually stably do 2160. Um, but we'll try it and we'll see. All right. Uh, that run was pretty good. It, it was stable at 8500. I'm kind of surprised by that. Uh, we got a score of 9,941. Um, I'm almost tempted to just change nothing and try that run again because I feel like that's almost enough to win it right there. Um, but uh, let's keep pushing. So I'm going to try 8,700. Let's see if it'll do that. Uh, I think I'm pushing my luck there. And then 120 on the core, uh, probably pushing my luck there as well. It's taking much longer to load this run, which is not a good sign. All right. All right, well, that caused the system to completely hard lock, but we were really close on the run where we got uh, 9941. Um, so I think I'm gonna try those settings again and just increase the memory clock a little bit. Uh, I did increase the memory clock a little bit. I'm basically just hoping for a lucky run here, see if we can get it just over 10,000. So far, so good, it loaded, so that's, and it crashed. Hmm. All right, 8,700 is probably the limit for that memory. Uh, let's try 86. And we're gonna leave everything else the same. We're gonna try again. <laughs> okay, it made it through it and it got a score of 9973. 
haven't quite broken 10,000 yet, and I can tell you it's getting very close to the limits of that memory. Um, one of the ways you can tell that your memory is getting right to the edge of its overclock uh, is if you start to see visual artifacts and weird things on screen. And I was noticing through that, that last run um, that some lines were starting to show up on screen uh, and some little things were popping in and out. That's usually a pretty good sign that there's not much left in that memory. So let's try 1650 against, uh, oops, too much. Again, uh, 1700 was too much. Uh, maybe 1650 will work. Uh, let's try it. Bad memory artifacting issues. Um, but it hasn't crashed yet. So fingers crossed. Nobody said it had to look perfect. Just that it didn't need to crash. That's a weird memory error. All right, this is scene 16 of 17. It's looking pretty good. Now we're on the final scene. Again, weird memory artifacts. Let's, oh, come on! Ah! Oh. I'm gonna try one more time at 16.35. Ah, uh, no. Okay, this one crashed. So, mm. I'm going to try lowering it a little bit again, but actually one thing that I want to do, and this can help you as well, um, if you get to the point where your overclocks are starting to get unstable, even at frequencies that you think should be stable, um, you may want to restart your system. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Whoa. Whoa. What did it just do? Um, Okay. Uh, I'm not getting any registered GPU clock on the OSD anymore. The computer's just straight up hard restarted, crashed on itself. So, um, try this again, see if I can get uh, one clean run. I think I'm gonna have to go back to 1600 on the memory because uh, anything that I try to push above that is just not stable. All right, looks like it went all the way through. <sighs> That's 9,864, very close, but there's really not much left in the card. Um, the only thing I could try to do is maybe get it colder um, by letting it kind of idle longer. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything else left in it. So um, unfortunately, we didn't make it to our 10,000 target, um, but that's pretty good. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Uh, catch us for future videos and how-tos. We'll show you how to use EVGA hardware and software together uh, to make a pretty awesome system. Uh, so stay tuned to this channel. Uh, ring the bell notification and make sure you're subscribed so that you can see all videos that we post here on Team EVGA. Uh, you have a good rest of your day.